This is Phil Metz with Cane Creek Cycling Components, and today we're going to learn how to properly set sag on your new Cane Creek shock. So sag is the amount the bicycle suspension changes from being fully extended and unweighted versus being fully compressed under the rider's weight. The optimal sag is normally in between 28 and 33%, but this may differ from frame to frame and personal preference. To achieve the optimal sag, there are two numbers we need the eye to eye, and the stroke length. You can either measure this or find this on a Cane Creek Fit Finder. Okay, time for a quick math lesson. Since the desired sag is anywhere in between 28 and 33%, we need to do two calculations. You take the eye to eye and subtract the stroke length multiplied by the percentage. You do this for the low sag number and the high sag number. Let's use this shock as an example. It has an eye to eye of 222 millimeters and a stroke length of 70 millimeters. Here, we're going to calculate for the high sag value of 33%. When we plug those numbers in, we get 222 subtracted by 70 multiplied by 0.33. 70 multiplied by 0.33 comes out to 23.1. We then take that number and subtract it from 222, which comes out to 198.9. Since we're just riding bikes and not traveling to the moon, we can simplify these numbers. You can also use the Cane Creek Dialed app, which will make these calculations for you. So for this shock, which has an eye to eye of 222 millimeters and a stroke length of 70 millimeters, we're looking for 23 millimeters of sag, which corresponds to 33% of the stroke length, which is 70 millimeters. That means when the shock is compressed under the rider's weight, the eye to eye will now measure 199 millimeters. When you go to set sag, you want to be in your full riding gear. This includes your helmet, pads, backpack, or anything else you may be carrying on the trail with you. For a coil shock, you're going to need to have a friend. While you're standing on the bike, have your friend measure the eye to eye of the compressed shock. In this case, I have too much sag. The eye to eye measured 189 millimeters, which is outside the desired sag range for my shock. So I'm going to add some additional preload by twisting the coil clockwise, which will decrease the amount of sag. It is important to note, if you need any more than five turns to achieve the optimal sag, you'll need to increase the spring rate instead of adding more preload. Adding too much preload will prevent the suspension from working properly. Setting up an air shock is slightly different. All you need to do is place the o-ring back to default setting and sit on the bike. The distance between your o-ring and the canister is the amount of sag. On air shocks, the spring rate is dictated by the amount of air pressure inside the shock. So since I had too much sag, I will need to increase the amount of air pressure inside the shock to achieve the optimal sag. So if you don't like math, here are some common sized shocks that King Creek offers. If you're still unsure, check the King Creek Fit Finder for your bike, model, and its appropriate sag. And if your bike isn't listed on the King Creek Fit Finder, give us a call and we'll help you out. Thanks for watching this King Creek Tech video. My name is Phil Metz and I'll see you next time.